Hi, I'm Marco Rubio, and welcome to this week's Constituent Mailbox series. As you know, every week we've been reaching into the Constituent Mailbox, both our emails and our written letters, and answering your questions here on the air. And so we appreciate and we ask you to continue to email and write us. So let's get started. We've picked three letters today. The first is an email, and it comes from Gary in Lake City. Here's what Gary writes. Let's work together as a country and take politics out of the deal. Let's take action and join the Democrats and get America working. Just listen to Obama and his jobs program sounds like it has a program that can work. All the blocking and going nowhere in D.C. has not done anything to get us working. Let's try to do something rather than just saying no at every turn. Well, I agree with you. We shouldn't say no at every turn, Gary. The problem is that whatever we do has to work. It's not just enough to pass a bill. The bill actually has to work. It has to actually succeed. And there are some things in the president's package that he put together that will work and that I could support. A lot of it won't work. In fact, it's things that have already been tried in the stimulus package over two years ago. And it didn't work then, and it won't work now. Here's the simple truth, whether we want to accept it or not. Here's the simple truth. What grows the American economy is the free enterprise system. That means people have the confidence to start a business or to grow an existing business. Now, what gives them that confidence? Well, what gives them that confidence is primarily the belief that the business has a chance to succeed and that tomorrow will be better than today. And right now, people don't believe that. And here's why they don't believe that. They don't believe in that because government does not have a serious plan to deal with the debt and the deficit. They don't believe that because our regulatory code is strangling businesses. Every single day, these agencies in Washington, D.C. are writing some of the craziest rules you've ever heard. And I encourage you to contact our office. We'll send you a list of them. And by the way, they're not encouraged about our future because of our tax code. It's complicated. It's burdensome. It's difficult to comply with. We need tax reform, not just tax cuts. We need tax reform, a simplified tax code that people can understand and that is predictable so they know how much tomorrow is going to cost. These are the things that will work. But to believe that these things will work, you have to accept the fundamental premise that what makes America's economy grow and what creates jobs is not government. It's the free enterprise system. It's the private sector. Government can create some government jobs for a brief period of time. But true economic growth, the kinds that will create the jobs that both you and I think we need, is only going to come through a vibrant private market. And right now, as long as Washington, D.C. is doing the things it's doing, as long as it refuses to fix the debt, refuses to simplify the tax code, and refuses to get rid of these onerous regulations, we're not going to have the kind of economic growth in our country that we need. These are the things I support. These are the things I campaigned on. These are the things I'm ready to vote on today, tomorrow, whenever they're ready to go. But I cannot support ideas that are called a job plan, but in fact do nothing to create jobs. But we'll grow our national debt by another $400 billion or worse, tax your health care benefits. So these are the things I'm focused on, Gary, and I'm more than happy to continue to interact with you and others. I do want America to have a jobs program. But the best job program we can have is a government that gives job creators the confidence to build for the future. Our next uh, email comes from Dallas in Lake City, and she writes, I have been a Republican for 17 years and generally support the Republican Party's decisions. However, two years ago, I opened my own small business, which created 25 jobs in our small town. Every day, I watch other small businesses close their doors and wonder how long mine can continue to survive. We need help. The Americans Job Act is offering that in the form of payroll tax cuts, which generally cost me about $6,000 a month. Each month, I have to scrape by to find ways of paying these taxes to the point that some months, I don't even draw a paycheck. Even if it means expanding government in some areas, I urge you to pass this bill for the sake of my company, my employees, and many other businesses in the same boat as me. Well, Dallas, I understand exactly how you feel. And I support a payroll tax cut. The problem is the one that the president's supporting is only for one year. It's short term. It does nothing for the long term of our country. And while I can support that as part of a package, that alone is not enough. We need other things in order to grow our economy. We need certainty about the future. Small businesses like yours, you need customers. So why aren't people out there buying goods and services? Why aren't they spending? One of the reasons is because they're not optimistic about the future. And the reason why they're not optimistic about the, about the future is because all the news seems to be bad. Our tax code is nowhere near being fixed. Our debt continues to climb, and people think that that's going to mean higher interest rates and higher taxes. Our regulatory code is strangling businesses, especially small businesses, that cannot afford to hire the army of lawyers and accountants that it takes to comply with these owner's, tax, uh, these are owners regulations. So I agree with you, Dallas. We do need to do something for small business. It is the backbone of our economy. But the, what, we really, what government can really do to help small businesses is create an environment that encourages people to go out and begin to spend and buy things again. And as long as we have this broken tax code, these broken and onerous regulations, and no serious plan to deal with the debt, none of this is going to happen. So thank you for your input. I agree with you on the payroll tax issue. I only wish it was part of a permanent plan 
that would solve our crisis moving forward. Finally, our third email comes from Amy in Palm Coast, and here's what Amy writes. I am a registered Democrat, but I am not a party loyalist. Having said that, I support President Obama and his jobs plan. If Congress doesn't stop the gamesmanship and partisan politics, a lot of legislators from both parties will be going home when your terms are up. Average middle class people like me have had enough. It's time for real tax reform, real reform in banking and on Wall Street, time to get our troops out of the Middle East, and time to start producing products here in the USA and put trade policies in place that will make that happen. I'm tired of buying Chinese goods. I will happily pay more for made in the USA. It's time to investigate and correct the serious abuses in Social Security disability and reform Social Security and Medicare to make them fiscally sustainable. Do what it takes to end our dependence on foreign oil. I will be closely monitoring your voting record along with that of Bill Nelson. Well, you touched upon a lot of issues, Amy, a laundry list, and all the right ones. For example, you touched upon trade. We need trade. Trade is important. Right now, there are three pending free trade agreements that the White House has yet to send to the Congress. If we did those free trade agreements, they would create jobs. Free trade agreements with Colombia, Panama, and South Korea. They're really good for America. They should be passed as soon as possible. Unfortunately, they're playing political games with it. You talked about Medicare and Social Security. Absolutely. Those are important programs. My mom is on those programs. I support those programs. We need those programs for our future. And if we act now, we have to make no, we would not have to make any changes to those programs for people that are currently in the programs or about to enter the programs. But my generation, people decades away from retirement, are going to have to accept that while we're going to have Social Security and Medicare, it's going to look a little different than our parents. But we're still going to have something better than anyone else in the world has. And that's a good thing, and I support that. And you're right, we should deal with that as well. I, too, am tired of the games. As I've said over and over again, this thing about job creation is a crisis. And it shouldn't be part of the gamesmanship and political back and forth. But just because something's called a jobs bill doesn't mean it's going to create jobs. The fact is that the things you're putting in that jobs bill have to work. And unfortunately, the stuff the president's asking for in his jobs bill, they've never worked. They've never worked in the past, and they will not work now. Here's what will help create jobs. Tax certainty. Let's have a tax code that's simple, one that makes sense, one that's easy for people to comply with, one that people know what it's going to look like. You know, businesses can't even predict what their taxes are going to be two years from now. Why would anyone take the risk of growing their business or hiring more people if they had no idea how much that's going to cost them two years from now? How about regulatory reform? You know how much money small businesses have to spend complying with onerous federal regulations, the lawyers, the accountants, and all the paperwork they have to do? That destroys and kills jobs in America. And of course, the national debt. People don't always correlate the national debt with job creation, but it's a huge dark cloud hanging over our entire economy, the national debt is. Because people think this national debt means higher taxes and higher interest rates in the future. This national debt means that tomorrow may be worse than today. And when people think tomorrow is going to be worse than today, they hold on to their money. They don't go out and spend and buy. They don't frequent our businesses. We don't have customers. If you don't have customers, you don't have jobs. So these are the things I hope we'll focus on. And I will work with anyone in Washington, D.C., Democrat or Republican, that's serious about addressing these issues. Well, I appreciate all the input we got this week. We look forward again next week to talking to more of you uh, about your concerns and your interests. Uh, I encourage you to email us or send us your letters. And who knows, maybe next week you'll be the one we'll be responding to. I thank you all for the privilege and the honor that I have of representing you here in Washington, D.C., and I look forward again to speaking to you next week. God bless all of you, and God bless our country.